federal government has proposed decreasing and cutting medical grants or medical study grants through the NIH to 15%, the indirect cost of 15%. What does that mean? Hi, everyone. I'm Dr. Omar Awan. I'm a physician, senior public health contributor for Forbes and med patient a columnist. I want to talk about what this means. And especially for those of you that aren't science related or don't have a science background, I want to break this down a little bit so that everyone understands what this means. So, you know, NIH funding grants, these are a big deal to a lot of scientists and a lot of physicians. So as someone that has actually prepared grants before, these take a lot of time. They take months to prepare and to submit, and they're extremely competitive. Like the majority of people that submit grants don't get NIH funding grants. Maybe 10 to 15% of people that actually submit them actually end up getting grant funding. And there is a difference between direct costs and indirect costs. And I think it's important to understand that because what's being affected are the indirect costs, you know, coming down to 15% by the federal government. Direct costs are costs that are directly related to your research. So maybe your laboratory material, uh, salaries of, you know, yourself, the physician, or the people that are actually physically carrying out the research. These are direct costs. Indirect costs don't relate directly to the research. So things like office space, electricity, heating, potentially hiring administrative staff and paying their salary, printer paper, journal subscriptions. These are all indirect costs. And indirect costs are usually negotiated with the NIH and you get a certain percentage of what your entire grant was and then the institution gets that money. So for example, let's say that you applied for a grant for $100,000, and $100,000 is your direct cost. Now, traditionally, indirect costs could be anywhere from 20 to 30% of that to up to even 75 or 80% of that. So that means if you're at $100,000, that means anywhere from $20,000 to $80,000. And a lot of top institutions like Johns Hopkins, UCSF, University of Pennsylvania, they usually get 60 to 75% of that. So for a $100,000 grant, they would get $60,000 to $75,000 for indirect cost. But to decrease that to 15% for a $100,000 grant, they would now only get $15,000. So you can see there's a tremendous drop or cut in the amount of indirect cost that now research will get for their grant. So this is what's at stake here. This has caused a lot of uh, uproar on social media and a lot of medical people and scientists are talking about this. What does this mean for public health and why should we care about this? Well, for one, this threatens science and innovation, right? I mean, if you look at what science has done and what research has done, it's because of research that we have an oral cure for hepatitis C. It's because of research, we now have antiviral therapy for HIV that now lets people live with HIV or AIDS. Before, remember, 20 or 30 years ago, having HIV or AIDS was like a death sentence, right? So, you know, there have been so many, because of research, we have great vaccines that have saved lives. I mean, the list goes on and on. And if we don't have enough funds to do research, then that threatens our ability to do research and to make these amazing, innovative discoveries that allow people to live longer, happier, and healthier, right? So that's number one. And I think that's the most obvious thing. The other thing is, there's a huge effect on medical personnel. So, you know, there, I know a lot of people personally that are scared of losing their jobs and people will lose their jobs. So all these administrative people that are covered with indirect costs, you know, facilities may not have the money to actually pay them. And that threatens, you know, the researchers ability to actually do the research properly when they don't have these funds and then they can't do research properly. And then they may not even do the research at all. So, you know, it affects them. And even for people that are new physicians that are coming out of medical school and they want to have a research career, you know, that inspiration may dwindle now because the federal government is not supporting them. You know, the research, the amount of money that they're going to get for a grant that they apply for may not be enough. And then what's the purpose of working so hard, preparing months, five, six months for a grant when you don't have the financial support to actually do the project that you really want to do? That can be demoralizing. And then that may sway people away from having a research career and that's sad, right? Because that's how it's because of science and research that we're able to make so many amazing discoveries and why America is at the helm of innovation in the world. The other aspect of this is, is that this is going to have consequences for, you know, even conflict of interest. You know, me medical schools, institutions need the money to do this research. So how are they going to get it? Well, maybe they may increase tuition for students that are coming in so they can pay for these funds. They may go to other third parties like pharmaceutical industries that then may 
subsidize and fund these grants. But when that happens, that's a conflict of interest, right? Because then you're getting money from a pharmaceutical company, but then you may not be able to report the findings of research in a non-biased way because you're getting funded through the pharmaceutical industry, or they may put pressure on you to report certain things in a certain way because they're funding you and not the federal government is funding you, right? When the federal government is funding you, there is less of that incentive or less bias when it comes to research. And that can have a profound effect in the way research is done, the way research is reported, and quite frankly, the accuracy of findings. And that's a major problem for science. And that's just three basic ways how this can really make a difference. So hopefully things change. Hopefully science gets the funding that it deserves. It's the way we made so many innovations and it's changed lives, quite frankly. And I hope that they get the money that they deserve. Hope that was helpful in breaking down this 15% indirect funds cut. Uh, please subscribe to the MedEd page. And as always, please be kind to yourself and to those around you.